Thanks for watching this replay of Award Travel 101. I'm Richard Kerr, the founder. It has been far too long since we've done this. Now with the new name of Award Travel 101, I'm here tonight with Tony Perkins Southam, brand new moderator to Award Travel 101. Tony, how are you tonight? I'm great. Hi, thanks for having me here. I have met Tony um, at a couple conferences, and let me tell you, when it comes to award travel, um, there are some some titans out there. There's some some mountains that you couldn't even climb, and Tony is one of them. She's going to share some of our stories. But before we get started tonight, um, please, as you join in, tell me uh, where are you coming from. Uh, as always, Rachel Berkey, senior moderator for the group, is here tonight. She's going to be typing in the comments, so please follow along as we mention things. Rachel is going to share them into the comments. But so right now, tell me and Tony where you're coming in from. I love seeing the reach of War Travel 101. I'm on the East Coast. Tony is not on the East Coast. Tony, where are you coming from tonight? From Utah. Exciting Utah. That's what I'm talking about. So a few things. What's going on in the group? Obviously, we have a new name. Obviously, we have new moderators. You're going to get to know one tonight. I have my notes here. You're going to see me glance down. Don't worry. Don't get nervous. It's not a twitch. It's what I'm reading. Um, as always, I'm going to introduce my drink of the night. No bourbon tonight. I have an early morning with the Marines, so uh, a yingling is what I'm having in my nice mug. Um, I think Tony is far too healthy for that, so you're probably sticking with water or something, right? Oh, Coke Zero. That's right. You're special. Every day, for as long as I can until they replace it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, a few things. Um, a big event coming up this weekend in Houston. I think we're going to have 75, 80, maybe even 100 folks. Um, Rachel is going to share the link to the group event right there. Um, in the comments. So 5.30 at the Hyatt uh, Place Galleria in Houston. We have uh, Summer Smith. Mommy Points is coming to do a Q&A with me. We have Mike from the Plastic Merchant who's coming. And then uh, on the sidelines are going to be some of the uh, best minds in all of points and travel. So this weekend, the very next weekend right here in D.C. in my home area, uh, we're going to do an evening of points and style with Ashley Hightower from Cobalt Chronicles uh, at the Brig, which is a beer garden. Incredible venue. We're going to uh, see it tomorrow night and make sure we have it all set up. Both those events coming up. We have uh, San Francisco in December. Um, we're going to add a New York event in uh, November. So, uh, Tony, I expect you to fly over from Utah uh, all the way into the New York event to meet your adoring fans after tonight. Uh, so a lot going on in award travel one-on-one. So, as always, I appreciate your support. You can always support the group through the credit card links in the pinned post at the top of the group. Don't ever get a credit card uh, unless you understand the FICO score, unless you're never going to carry a balance, and uh, that you've done your homework. You know how that uh, credit score is going to be impacted. Remember, it's one of the most important assets that you have. Please protect it. If you do use those links and you're approved, we get paid a commission. I love doing this, Tony. I know you love doing this. I know you love doing this so much, and I've heard some of your stories. So uh, while everybody tells us there in the comments where they're coming in from so that they can get to know you a little bit, tell me one of your best stories from traveling with your very large family. Okay. I, I mean, I have so many. We've done quite a few trips with them. Um, my favorite, and I'm sure a lot of people have heard this before, but it's so good I have to share it again. So last year, I, um, I went to Europe with my children. My husband flew out with us and stayed for a week. And then we, um, I stayed with the kids for about two and a half months without him. That's four kids, right? Four, no, four kids. My seven, baby was fourteen. Four. It feels like it, right? If you like adjust adjust for inflation, it's like a thousand or something. I think. <laughs> just kids for inflation. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> so we, um, four kids. My baby was seventeen months old, and my son got an abscess too while we were there. And we went walking around. I, I didn't have a debit card, so I couldn't. Oh, I guess I should tell you how old my kids are. Um, at the time, they were nine, six, four. He just turned four, I think, in 17 months. So pretty little. Um, anyway, so my son got an abscess tooth, and we just ended up walking all over. We were in Croatia, this little town called Pula, Croatia, walking all over, trying to, like, give him an antibiotic, but then we couldn't get him that, so we had to walk up to the hospital, and then they gave him one, and then it didn't work. So we ended up having to go take him to a dentist, and in Croatia, fun fact, you don't actually have to be a dentist to practice dentistry there. So we found someone that was willing to work on him, and she just didn't speak any English, basically said hi, sat him in the chair, and just started drilling away. No, nothing See, to numb him. You don't anything. have to be a dentist to practice dentistry, so like the, the, no. milkman, the milkman can start wailing away on your kid's teeth? Is that 
paper. I think so. One of the one of the people I looked up, um, she was actually a nurse that was practicing dentistry, and I don't know, like I'm not sure what the credentials for nursing are there either, but. Yeah, and actually, apparently, that's very common in a lot of countries. And when I was in Guatemala, I was speaking to an American dentist who volunteered in Guatemala, and he said the same thing. So something to be aware of if you're traveling with your kids. So no anesthesia, no numbing. There's a drill going on your seven-year-old son for you? He was nine. Nine-year-old son's teeth? Drilled right in there, and he was screaming, and I was, like, shaking and panicking, and, and it was crazy. But he survived. <laughs> <laughs> not even a friend of the <laughs> This is why you collect points and miles so you can take your children to Eastern Europe and get their teeth drilled uh, with no <laughs> anesthesia. Oh, and, not to brush their teeth. <laughs> and, and, you got a, and you got a new dog today, too. I see a new family member. Good. She's going to join us. This is Beatrice. Hi, Beatrice. <laughs> so, so to everybody joining us tonight, I'm here with uh, Tony Southam, brand new moderator for War Travel 101. She has four children, Husband, uh, Army veteran, now works in the oil fields uh, out in the West. Um, as a Navy man, I can't say I'm particularly okay with that, but I want you to know how accommodated I am bringing an Army man into the award travel one-on-one -on -one family. Uh, four children. Tony's traveled around the world uh, two summers ago, uh, eight weeks in Croatia. I remember your story of France. Yeah. Um, also, one of my other favorite stories is um, you woke up and thought your daughter had eaten an entire bottle of Flintstone vitamins. So you spent <laughs> The kind with iron. With iron. So you thought she had iron poisoning. You go sit in the waiting room for eight hours in a French hospital. Um, they treat her. You come back and you like flip the sheet and you realize all the vitamins are in the sheets and she never ate anything in the first place. So um, the kind of story she has, she's traveled the world. Please, throughout the night, ask questions. Rachel Berkey, senior moderator, is here. We're going to stop and ask them um, whenever you have questions for Tony and how she travels with such a large family. Uh, and I'm really going to get right into it. Um, so. Um, tell me about how you started with points and miles. When was the first time when you realized, um, Hey, I have a large family. Did you have a large family yet? And you're like, Hey, there's really something to this. What, what is the one, we all have the one thing that just grabs us and gets us addicted to points and miles. Uh, you know what? I, I have a really addictive personality anyway. So it's kind of surprising. I wasn't crazy about this earlier, but I remember specifically one night I was talking to um, a relative of mine and her husband and um, her, they were in college, like, you know, poor college kids trying to make a living, you know, trying to survive. And she's like, yeah, we're flying to Spain and then we're going to Hawaii. We got like first class tickets. And I was like, whoa, what? Like, what did you, how? And she's like, a thing called like travel hacking. And I was like, okay, she's lost her mind. Like I always thought she was such a good person. And now she's this like con artist scammer or something. <laughs> Shock, right? At bare minimum, everybody thinks it's MLM, multi-level marketing or a pyramid. <laughs> right. I was just, yeah, exactly. And then she told me, she's like, yeah, we got some credit cards. And that's when I was just like, you know, my whole life, credit cards are the devil. I don't have credit cards. And like my one experience with a credit card, I, you know, just was like, oh, I want a new couch and I'm not crazy with it. So I was like, oh, they got credit cards too? Oh my gosh, like who is she? I don't even know her anymore. But um, anyway, so they then she kind of started talking to me about it, and I wasn't convinced at all. And then her husband, she's like, call my husband. He'll tell you. And I probably talked to him on the phone for like three hours that night, and I was done. I was sold. Like, I, I've never looked back. It's been almost five years, and it's just I've never, never stopped. <laughs> um, how many children did you have when you started that? I had, well, three. Three kids. Oh. and yeah, um, three kids. You know, I only, have, I only have two now, and I think uh, how, as a family of four, if we want to go anywhere, how would I do this without points and miles? A lot of people say I have too many kids. I can't find award seats availability. I have to have uh, two hotel rooms. You know, in my mind, if you know what you're doing, there's no way you could afford to travel without points and miles. So with a family of six, when you guys take off, what are some of your – some of the things that you know off the bat you have to consider when it comes to redeeming those points and miles. Right. Well, really fast, I'm wondering if anyone on here also has a large family. I don't usually run into people with that. So comment if you guys have lots of kids. Anyone beat me? <laughs> Please let me know how many large families we have in award travel one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, so some, some considerations that I have to make are um, we're not we're, – we're fortunate in that we're flexible with our schedule in that we can go like – Let's go in December. No, let's go January. Just kind of when there's availability. The 
hard part though is finding flights that don't have like ridiculous layovers that don't have crazy. I mean, we learned really fast. Like one of our first trips that we ever went on, we had like a nine hour layover in Chicago. It was so miserable that we, we learned from there. So that's, that definitely makes it a little bit harder. Um, and I feel like that's the hardest part is just finding the right schedule. Cause it's, it can be really tricky, especially because living in Salt Lake, we used to live in a smaller town in Colorado and we had the option to drive to Denver, but it was, you know, almost a five hour drive. And then so it was you're like, looking at, uh, you talk about schedule. What's your first website you go to, to, to look at the schedules of what's going to be convenient for you? You know, I just, I really just kind of start looking. Let me explain my process a little bit and then I can kind sure. of explain that. So for the most part, we, we always say we don't decide where we're going. The miles decide <laughs> because once again, I have to find six seats and yeah. um, it's, you know, it's a challenge. So a lot of times we kind of have our like go-to destinations because once we can um, get there, we will usually, you know, we can go anywhere from there. So like a lot of times one of the, we go to Paris often because we found that there's a lot of American airlines avail availability to go um, like Charlotte to Paris, or I think we've done, um, I think Philadelphia to Paris. I think we've done that route a few times. Um, I, just, I don't, I'm pretty sure they still have that route anyway. So sure. yeah. Flown by Legacy U.S. Airways A330 is out of Philadelphia and Charlotte. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah. Don't ask me what airplane it was. It was a scary, terrifying one. That's all I know. <laughs> so that totally unfortunately, you, didn't fall. you have a fear of flying, right? Is that you, you, even after all this travel, you just, you can't handle it. You just, you don't do well. I cry on more airplanes than I don't. It's, <laughs> it's kind of a joke, like, anymore because, you know, I've gotten better to, I used to get sick to my stomach before even takeoff with anxiety. I was so afraid. Now, usually once I get on the plane and take off, I do pretty good. But once it starts getting turbulent, even at all, I just lose my mind. And I look, I look like a total psychopath path because I realize that like, if I bounce up and down in my chair when it's turbulent, I can't tell if it's me or if it's the airplane shaking. So <laughs> I'm, <laughs> all right. I got you on a tangent, your process. So you, the, you said, the miles determine the destination, which is actually a great thing to bring up. I'm constantly telling people, the one on one the people beginning, you got to get a goal first and then collect the points uh, to get there. So you're saying, because I have a family of six, I can't just go and say, I want to go to Botswana. Maybe there's not six award seats, but when you just, you search around, you find what has six seats. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, American airline, it always surprises me because we're big American Airlines um, award program fans, which is like crazy. No one ever says that ever. I mean, the platinum, and I don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. But I think that well, first of all, the miles are so easy to come by still, and we have a, a ton of miles left over from you know the good old days when it was a lot easier to get uh, cards and stuff like that. Um, anyway, so we have. I mean. I don't know, like, am I allowed to drop numbers here? Because we've been sitting on over a million American Airline miles for a while, right? Do whatever you're comfortable with. You whip out that bank account balance and show us what yeah, you're working right. with. Right. American Airlines. <laughs> we, uh, we have a ton of American Airline miles, and they've just, they're just so easy to acquire. And if you're flexible enough and you don't care about riding in premium cabins, um, I never really ran into problems booking with them. And I consistently find, I mean, we travel international four or five times a year with our so you kids. Go straight to AA.com, six passengers, redeem miles, and you're looking for coach and you're saying, contrary to what I say all the time, although I'm looking at a lot of domestic routes, is, hey, there's no problem when you're going international and coach. Yep. We just booked a flight for Morocco and we are going, I mean, I didn't even have to do a weird search. I actually, this was pretty exciting because a lot of times I'll have to like kind of put my segments together yep. and call in. This time I just put in Salt Lake City to, um, I put in Paris because that's my go-to um, just to kind of see what I'd find. And it was like, it was too good not to, it was like too good to be true. I'm like, what, what is wrong here? Because it just, it lined right up. There wasn't any weird layovers. So I think we're going, um, Salt Lake. Oh, it is a little bit of a longer flight, but you know, Salt Lake, San Francisco, San Francisco to Charlotte or Philadelphia, and then to Paris. 
So, um, yeah, and it was at the saver level and, you know, five, what is it? The taxes are like $5 and 11 cents or $5 and 60 cents a person. How are you getting from Paris to Morocco? Um, I found a flight on, um, okay, no, I haven't booked that part yet, <laughs> but I know how we're getting back from Morocco. I found a flight on Norwegian from Morocco to Madrid. It was, um, like $29 or 29 year old person. So yeah. like $5. dollars like it's funny you say that during the um, the huge blitz I had the last day of the old city prestige. Uh, I think I told you I booked the Amman Morocco for Emily and I. So I was mm -hmm. looking at flights over there. And um, because Morocco and its French uh, colonial ties, there's 20 billion flights from Paris to um, Casablanca or uh, Marrakesh, And it's like it's like 90 bucks on Air France. I mean, yeah. it was nothing. It was so you're good to go. There. So, so recap no Tony says family of six. The miles determine the destination rather than us using a uh, select destination and trying to use the miles. So she's saying, I, I'm going to go check this now. She's saying American Airlines is no problem with the family of six. You can go economy international and she's not having problems now. Personally, Salt Lake City to San Fran to Philadelphia to Paris to Morocco. But if your family of six is going for free and you got reasonable layovers and it sounds like your children know the deal, they, they know what they're getting into when, you know, they, and they're a little bit older now, the one and two year old, I, I just got to go off the, on the tangent real quick, just because this is what I'm facing now with my two, almost three year old. He's at that point now where you can't reason with him. He knows the deal. He's been on over 40 flights, but it's still challenging when he gets a little bit restless What's yeah. your what's your strategy to keep these kids under control? Oh, I don't. <laughs> so, this is one of my. Um, this is what I always tell myself: you can do anything for twenty four hours, and the flight itself isn't even that long. I'm like seven hours, right, or ten hours, whatever. I'm like, you can do anything for ten hours, and once you get there, you're good to go. So yeah, I usually just like expect the worst, get the best. We've had, I'm um, you know for the most part they're pretty good, and I I give them complete like control of I'm like here here's an iPad for you and a phone for you and a phone for you because I just don't want to deal with trying to entertain kids for eight hours or whatever but um I mean we've had our fair share of meltdowns and you just have to deal with it and we, despite what you read on the news um 99.999 percent of the time people are so helpful and so kind and they're I've had like one experience with a horrible person yeah. Just, and my kids weren't even being bad. That's what was shocking. And and then the whole plane could hear her complaining. And it was just a small uh, regional plane. And they were just like, oh, she's so rude. Just ignore her. And they were all on my side. So, you know. Sure. No problems. Hey, while we go into the next questions, everybody, if you have questions, we're going to do Q&A wow. at the end. Please ask them in the comments. And then tell us your go-to strategies. Either if you're a parent and traveling with children, what do you do to try and get through the flight? If you're single or if you don't have kids, what do you do to get along with the families that you're traveling with that may be getting on your nerves? Throw them in the comments here. This video is going to be posted on the page for, for the rest of time because War Travel 101 is always going to be here. People love reading the comments. Throw questions out. Give us your tips. Um, so I'm going to switch from using American Miles with a big family over to hotels a little bit. Um, you face occupancy challenges going overseas, especially in Europe. What are some things that you do to get around those Hotel award booking strategies. Uh, I know you have some stories specifically in Europe about um, what you do to try and get free hotel nights. Right, right. Um, well, there's definitely this is this to me is way more challenging than flying like finding flights. It's so much work because we normally have to get to hotel rooms when we're in Europe. Like, okay, actually, if my husband's with me, then yes. If it's just me and my kids, I play the like whole crazy mom car like I'm sorry would you like to sleep with one of my kids in their own room tonight and they usually are like one room's fine and it works out really well we've <laughs> we've gone upgraded to some pretty awesome suites that way um because they're like oh this when we were in I was telling you when we were in Switzerland we were staying at the Park Hyatt Zurich and it was just um myself and my kids and we got there and we get to the room and <laughs> they <laughs> thanks Emily <laughs> sorry reading the comments here um so we got there and the, we get into our room and the lady's like, she left and then she calls us and she's like, I just, I feel like that room's way too small for you guys. We have another room if, if you'd like to check it out. And I was like, sure, why not? You know, thinking like how much better could it be? Oh, 
it was way better. It was the nicest suite they had in the whole entire hotel. And we looked at the price of it and that sucker was almost $5,000 a night. So it was pretty yeah. awesome. But the park height Zurich category yeah. seven, 30,000 points a night or 15,000 points and $300 a night. If you do points in cash. So Tony's saying, um, I can play the mom card. I can say, look, please one room have you ever had anybody give you the the stiff arm and say no you have to get two rooms you're above occupancy no not when i'm with my kids which makes sense obviously when i'm with my husband i don't even i don't even push it because i mean i've read so many stories like it, it's just which is funny because i'm not like i'm a rule follower but i always find like little loopholes obviously most of us do in this game but we for the most part yeah, we were right. So, but for the most part, when it comes to uh, booking hotel rooms, yeah, I don't even, I just, I'm like, we're getting two rooms. I'm not even going to bother. It's a, it's a little more convenient that way anyway. Um, I, uh, it, and it's, um, yeah, just, yeah, I, I get two hotel rooms. We've recently been doing, um, a little bit more Airbnb, which has been pretty awesome. So this summer I went with my kids to, we stayed in Guatemala for five weeks and then we stayed in, Panama and Colombia for a week. And um, my husband, he flew out with us, dropped us off at our Airbnb, and then it was just the kids and I. And that was really, really super awesome. I loved it. Uh, it's just really nice to have like a place to cook at. Um, anyone else in here love Airbnb? Because I love Airbnb. Um, any tips to getting discounts on Airbnb? Right. And same to the commenters. Tell us in the comments if you have any tips to getting discounts negotiating. Is that something you've done before? No. I don't really negotiate just because I don't know. I'm just weird like that. But I will say that I have hardly ever paid for an Airbnb. First of all, you can get Airbnb gift cards discounted pretty easily through different sources and stuff. And when you're saying it's such a long term, even, you know, five, 10%, it adds up fast. Um, but FYI, um, the, in their rules, if you're staying 28 days or over, you cannot use gift cards to stay there. You can't redeem a gift card. Not know that. Yeah, I actually purchased a ton for our trip last year as I got a really good discount on them. Went to book and it wouldn't work, and I was like, "What's going on?" And then they told me, and then I found it right there in the term. So yeah, so don't try and use gift cards if you're staying over 28 days. But I love using my um, Barclay Arrival Plus card yeah. because Airbnb codes as a travel expense. So our last trip, we had enough points. I think um, for the four weeks that we stayed in that specific Airbnb, it was like $1,300 and we paid zero. So that was a pretty sweet deal. So recap, Tony says big families, Airbnbs can be great discounted Airbnb gift cards. I find them now on places like Amazon has sales on them. Maybe uh, gift has them on sale. G Y F T.com PayPal yeah. digital gifts. They have sales routinely on gift cards. Now five, 10% off may not sound like a lot, but, 27 days. Uh, I, we've been looking at that. We're going to be digital nomads at least October to January. And I've looked at affordable Airbnbs, but you're saying the key is Barclay arrival plus cards, um, arrival plus points, redeem cover Airbnb counts is wiping off uh, a travel expense. A uh, hundred dollar minimum. Is that right? For wiping off Barclay arrival plus ex charges. Right. And then you get, I think it's like 5% of your points back when you redeem them. So I think the redemptions like, 2.1 or something like that, right? Uh, it used to be a little bit right. better, but a little bit more a year ago. Yeah, um, and I I love that card. I know that there's better, um, slightly better, well, better subjective, but anyways, yep. um, the, right, like on the you know on your everyday purchases, it's pretty standard, whatever. But um, the fifty thousand sign up point bonus, like that's huge. It's so easy to get, and it's not a bad spend, and it's just like boom, fifty thousand points. So. Emily, Emily finally picked hers up um, during our last uh, round of applications in hopes that I could use that $500 towards our next Airbnb stay. Uh, hey, Jess Farley, another moderator just jumped in there. Jess, located in Australia, says he's huge Airbnb fans. Um, I believe Jess is a little bit like you, except uh, a little bit smaller family, now half the size. But I think he and his wife hops around Asia for multiple years with their son. Um, so Jess, thanks for jumping in. And if anybody has questions, you can always hit Tony and Jess up here in the War Travel One on One. So I'm going to get you one more question, and we're going to go to the people watching. Please put your questions in now, um, so that Tony and I can get them. Remember, Tony's always going to be around. Now she's hooked. She's part of the War Travel One on One family. Um, you can ask your questions, but so 
we, this is a War Travel 101. I know sometimes, uh, and you guys reel me in and say, hey, stop talking so advanced. But for the 101ers, Tony, um, where do you start? If somebody watching tonight or in the future when they watch the replay has a large family and they say, I want to do that, but holy cow, it's a fire hose of information, narrow it down for them. Start right here. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, it's really easy in this game to get over analysis paralysis because you're just like, hey, that oh, you know, just to outweigh all the pros and cons. You're like, oh, I want this card, but then level count towards 524. But what if I want this card one day? Um, I feel like the biggest mistake that I think people make is that they just, um, like you said, they don't have a goal. You need a goal. Whether it doesn't have to be super specific, but, you know, if you, um, if you're like, oh, our dream is to go to uh, France, you know, and we live in a place with an AA hub, and then you go get like a, I'm trying to think of something really ridiculous, like a Southwest card. I'm like, you know, Southwest is great, but you can't get to France on Southwest, and you can't, you know, book Southwest on other partners. So, congratulations! But and I've had so many people, um, you know, I'll kind of tell them about this, and they get excited and they just jump in and they're like, oh, "I got this new blah 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 card," and then I'm like, "Oh, oh, oh I'm not going on vacation." <laughs> so set a goal. Think of a place that you, you know, you want to go be flexible and it's not you know like I said traveling with a big family yes we go where the miles take us but that's because we don't care you you can set like okay we're going to Paris and you can set a goal like that and you just you know work towards that goal and just get familiar with the system and realize you know if it actually is feasible and this is sorry I feel like that didn't really make a whole lot of sense you're saying just like we say all the time pick a goal I would recommend maybe do some preliminary searches beforehand to see, hey, am I out of the realm of possibility? Is there never one award seat? Is there is there multiple award seats? But set the goal and you know get those points. To me, I agree with that because it doesn't matter how many people are traveling. What that does in the big picture is it teaches you the in and outs of one program. I feel like once you learn the basics of one program, you can apply that to the other airline programs, the other hotel programs, the other – um, cash back programs. You just need to learn how one of these programs works and then you can apply that to everything else. So setting the goal sets you up for that one, that, that one way you're going to learn the in and outs and then apply those like, Oh yeah. Okay. I remember this is zone based too. Okay. This is a revenues based program too. Okay. This hotel program blacks out non-standard rooms. You just, you kind of learn those basics that you then apply to everywhere else. Um, so we have some questions coming in. I'm going to throw out, a few of my tips for big family travel, a few programs. Tony, let me know if you've ever done any of these or seen them. So um, Korean Airlines, when you look at flights on their own metal and you can transfer Chase Ultimate Rewards and Starwood points, eight, nine seats on Korean operated flights. Even in business class, you can go and see eight seats. You know, they fly the A380, the 747, 8i here to the States. Um, tons of award seats. That's one of the first things. You ever, you guys been to Asia yet as a family? Well, not as a family, and technically the furthest into Asia I've ever been is Jordan, so not really. <laughs> next trip, the next Perkins trip is going to be eight yeah. seats on Korean Airlines. We would love to. With Jason Can, can, can I add to You were talking about Please. programs that held availability. Um, so we recently found Iberia. Oh, my gosh. They have tons of availability. We're taking. We're going to Morocco this um this December. So we'll go Paris, like I said, Paris, Morocco, Morocco, Madrid. We're flying back Madrid to Chicago. And unfortunately I was, so I was able to, they had six um, J seats available. So business class seats available. And I waited a little too long to book it and I lost two of them, but I still was able to get four of us in business class. And my other two, my two oldest kids, I'm throwing them in the back. Um, <laughs> Good, but, for you. Yeah, right? Good for you. I completely agree. Yeah, yeah, I think um, in the last year, Iberia has just opened up. That I mean, it used to be a little bit tough, but lately, um, pretty. I was actually on the phone with them again. Morocco for us. You can use Iberia Abios to book um, Royal Air Morocco. So Emily and I are going to fly um, those guys from JFK nonstop to Casablanca. But when I was looking at that in the Iberia program, I, I started looking at the Iberia seats and went, "Wait a minute, these guys don't have six business class seats. I've never seen that before." And 
Yeah. Sure enough, there they are. It's like, what was it, like 34,000 avios, avios? Yeah. I don't know, everyone does it differently, um, one way. So it it's like nothing. It's a, with a 40% transfer bonus right now um, from Amex to British Airways and then combine your British Airways over to Iberia, you knock another 40% off those prices and it's, it's, yeah, it's great. Ridiculous. And even their economy plus, which um, I mean, it's not fully life flat or anything, but I think, I mean, from what I understand, it's a lot better than regular economy. I think sure. it was 25,500, it's 24,500 or 25. Like yeah, you you're talking in the 20,000s for transatlantic flights. It's yeah. mean, such a great deal. Hey, so real quick, we're at the half hour mark, some questions. I'm gonna hit you up with these, Tony, are you ready? All right. All right. Um, Sarah says, I've never used AA miles, never even had a credit card. If you were me, what is the first thing you would do to book your family of six to Paris for one week, eight months from now? She has 70,000 ultimate rewards, but she does not have any American miles. Uh, okay. Family of six to Paris, what's the first thing that you would do? Family of six to Paris. Um, I mean, it, it's a little hard, you know, how, how static are your dates? Like, do you have to go? on this certain time, because I think that's where people um, really get screwed over is when they're like, oh, I want to go on these dates. So if you can keep it pretty flexible, um, you'll have a lot better chance. Um, another thing I would do, 170,000 you are, I mean, you can transfer that. I wish, I don't know where she's based out of either. So it's kind of hard to be like, oh, transfer here and fly there. But um, I mean, United has Saver Awards. I think it's like 30,000. Yep. So it would get you, you know, it'd get you a little bit far. Um, How about splitting up? Have you guys ever split up? Um, you know, we've never had to, surprisingly. So it's really, well, not on purpose, on accident. When we were in Columbia, I accidentally booked my husband's flight for the day after. So I got to fly home with all the kids because we don't have status or anything like that. So I, I flew back with all the kids. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. But yeah, I mean, get familiar with different programs too. Like look at American Airlines. See if there's availability there and then be, you know, then, then maybe it'll be worth it to collect American airline miles or check out, you know, some of the ultimate rewards programs and, um, you know, the different transfer partners and be like, Hey, this place has a ton of availability to Paris and they fly to the airport I need to, and it's simple. Let's do it. So that, that's what I would say is research it, get to know, familiarize yourself with it and then build from there. Yeah. A couple, um, British Airways is also a Chase transfer partner, which means you can then tra transfer those to Iberia. So yeah, yeah. probably something to look at there if you want to get the family. Um, and the last thing I think at is, you know, surprisingly, as much as I hate on Delta, these guys have pretty decent economy saver. We don't know what that really is with Delta anymore, but availability yeah. over to Europe. Remember, you can transfer to Korea and transfer to Flying Blue, and you can book Delta flights over the pond for pretty reasonable prices as well. So you know, 40, 50,000 round trip, um, some things to think about. So um, Julie Russell says, hey, Tony, do you get trip insurance? I do now. <laughs> After what happened with my son, um, yeah, I definitely get trip insurance. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys know um, Dia? She, what's her, the, oh my gosh. The deal mommy, Dia. The deal mommy, yes. Oh my gosh, sorry. She, um, she actually talked quite a bit about getting um, travel insurance and stuff, and she, she really convinced me just because of it's so easy. You know, you have a problem, and they, they'll tell you the best place to go. Make sure they get you to the best doctors. You know, I was in Croatia, like asking anyone I could. I'm like, what? Who's a good dentist? You know, and they had terrible teeth, and they're like, go to this guy, and I'm like, ah. That so, was Alli yeah. Alliance, is that who she says? Alliance Travel Insurance? I think that's her go-to now. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. says, uh, do you guys think it's worth it to use points for around the world trip? Uh, I got a little secret here, Tony, I'm going to let everybody in on. If you have not looked at the ANA around the world chart, you need to go and look at that. Google it right now, ANA around the world. You can transfer MX points or SPG over to ANA. We're talking 88,000 miles, business class, five stops around the world. Go do it. Yes, that's absolutely worth it. Are they going to have six award seats for Tony and her family? Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but that's something to look at. All right. Um, Gene Anthony says, how do you keep airline and hotel points from expiring? Do you know one of the easiest ways to do it is just through a shopping portal. You can, use, you can go through a shopping portal and buy a song on iTunes, and that will renew your account. Um, yeah, that's definitely the easiest way. Or if you have a co-branded credit card, like your United miles are getting ready to expire and you have a United credit card, you can use that. Um, 
I think like surveys will reset it too, right? Because you're having, you have activities so you can. Yeah. If you go to uh, emails.com, I think is a survey one. Um, I'm going to plug um, awardwallet.com, which I'm going to give away six months of award wallet plus here in just a minute. If your American miles do not expire, if you comment on an award wallet blog post, you get five American miles. So just comment on a post. It's got to be a real comment, so don't put gibberish up there. But you do that, five miles will go into your American account, and voila, you've extended your American miles from expiring so that you can get your family of 12 to Paris, just like Tony does with her six. All right, one more question, and then I'm going to give away six months of Award Wallet Plus. Jennifer uh, Hattery says, it's so intimidating booking our first major redemption, planning our first family trip, March 2018, two weeks in Egypt with friends living there. 300,000 ultimate rewards. They're over 524. What rewards should we target next? So recap, 300,000 ultimate rewards. They're going to Europe. I mean, Egypt in March of 2018. They can't get any more ultimate rewards. What do you suggest for Egypt? Mm, uh, I'm wondering how many seats they have. I know we actually, my husband and I went to Egypt this um, winter probably like my favorite, most favorite place ever. I'm obsessed. It was incredible. So there's that right there. Um, what we ended up doing is <laughs> we used American airline miles to get to Egypt. Uh, found a really good redemption. We actually did, um, Oh gosh, I don't remember what we did. It was like Salt Lake to somewhere to, Oh, Philadelphia. And then Philadelphia to Munich and then Munich to Jordan. Um, so and we just did the economy and it was a pretty good redemption. I don't remember. Do you, do you know what it is to the Middle East uh, American Airlines from the U.S.? I want to say like. Uh, I think it's 40,000, maybe 45,000 in economy. I think, I think you're right. 40,000. So considering the distance you're going and stuff, I don't think that's too bad. Um, on the way home, we ended up paying because we found this crazy deal. And we um, we flew Royal Jordanian and we uh, were in business class, Jay, uh, Amon to JFK. And that was I hate flying. So for me to say that it was the best flight ever, like means something big time. Um, so, and there are, so not saying you shouldn't use your points, but keep your eyes open because there's a lot of really good deals coming out of Egypt and Jordan just because their economy is struggling and stuff right now and they, they need tourists. So you can find really good deals that way. Um, as far as, I mean, that would be like, that's one of my strategies is I don't just, you know, cause if I have, um, there's been so many times we'll book like American airlines there and then we'll book like this trip we're using, um, our British Airways, obvious, on Iberia to come back. So, you know, maybe use your, uh, figure out a way to get back with your um, ultimate rewards and use something else to get there. Maybe, like I said, look at American Airlines or something. Um, or if you want to go more premium, there's obviously way better options. Uh, coming back, I know that you can um, redeem business class seats because this is what I was trying to do. Um, you can you can fly on Egyptian Air, Egypt Air, that's what it is, it's Egypt Air, um, you can use Singapore miles, uh, mm -hmm. Egypt Air, uh, from Cairo to JFK maybe. And it's really, really good redemption. I think it's like 50 some thousand. I could be wrong. It could be higher than that. Anyways, really good redemption. So I would definitely look into that. Look at, uh, using Egypt Air to get back if that's, so you know. A big summary of all that is you better understand partners, all the partners within their alliance and all the programs that you can transfer to. Because transferring Chase Open Rewards to Singapore, Chris Flyer to redeem Egypt Air from Cairo to JFK is probably a great redemption. It's a very good redemption. So if that was a little bit more than one-on-one, -on -one, it's okay. Right. We're going to teach you. Stay in the group. Ask questions. We'll teach you. Hey, yeah. so I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, before I go over a little bit of housekeeping, right here in the comments, tell me where either A, you've had the best vacation ever with your large family, or B, if you don't have a large family and can't stand kids, it's the worst flight you've ever had that had kids on it. So if you have a big family, tell me where your best vacation has ever been. Um, if you don't have kids, you can't stand kids, tell me the worst flight you've ever had where the kids ruined it. In the comments right now, I'm going to pick one of you to win six months of Award Wallet Plus. If you don't have an Award Wallet account, you're really behind the curve. I'm on it every day. It keeps all of your loyalty programs one page. You click it, it logs in for you. You don't have to remember your numbers or your passwords. It's great. Tony, thanks a lot. I am so lucky to have you as part of the team. Everybody listening tonight can obviously tell the kind of knowledge that she has and that she's going to add into the group. She's jumped in 
both feet. She's got all her clothes on, jumping in the pond. She's getting completely soaking wet, answering all of your questions every day. Please continue to hit her up um, and tell me right now one of those two options for the best family trip ever or the worst flight you've ever had were the kids. And, Tony, I know your kids never act up. I know they're always perfect angels yes. on the flights. So remember, Houston, this weekend, the Houston Place Gallery at 5.30 p.m. Texas time. We're going to be there. I'm going to be there with Summer uh, Smith Hole, Mommy Points. We're going to do q and I've got a brief presentation on some award, spots, uh, award chart sweet spots. We've got a cash bar. They're shutting down the Hyatt Bar for us. We're going to take it over. Um, remember, D.C., the weekend after that, the Brig in D.C. Beer Garden. Excuse me. Um, and as always, I love the support. I'm on this group all the time. It's addicting. I love interacting with everybody. Please support the group. Use the links in the pinned post. But like Tony's going to tell you, you better protect the credit score or else you're not going to be able to take these awesome trips That's like right. everyone else is. All right. And thanks as always to Rachel, who's back there in the background, moderating, answering your comments, throwing links up. Rachel, I couldn't do it without you. So tonight's winner, Rachel is telling me, Tammy Spears Bigelow, six months of award wallet plus Tammy. If you can send me a PM and I'll send you that code. Congrats on winning that tonight. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Tony, parting words, words of wisdom for the one on oneers. Yeah, um, I would say over anything, don't don't let fear hold you back. I think flying is the scariest thing I could ever do, but I'm not going to let it hold me back. Don't be afraid to travel with your kids. Don't be afraid about oh, it's so many points. Just if you want to do it, make it happen. It's worth it. So worth it. And if you're on the other end of the spectrum and see Tony and her family walking down the Bridget Bridge, just just go ahead and get off. You want right? to take the next flight. You don't want to be on that thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tony, thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody. We're going to do this on a weekly basis. We're going to have topics. We have a lot going on in the group. We have luggage tags version two. I know a lot of you are asking for those coming up really soon. They're going to be up in the group. Catch you next week. Tony, enjoy Utah. Bye, guys. Thank you.